Just last week, we talked about the three gifts of Awan. And I know you didn't think we were done talking about the Awan. Because, one, we could dedicate an entire podcast just to that one topic. We talked about what we get from the Awan. Now we need to get a little bit more personal. What are the voices of the Awan? How does the Awan speak to and through us? Let's talk about that today as we walk down Creation's Path. Hello everyone, my name is Charlie and I am a Christo Pagan Druid and Priest of Bridget. Hello, my name is Brian. I am a Christo Pagan Druid and sous chef to the Dagda. I kind of want to start these episodes by saying Bridget Yeve or Bridget Augusto Dia Yeve, which Bridget Yeve means Bridget be with you, Bridget August, Bridget and your gods be with you. I, I don't know if I want to be starting in I- Irish or not. So let me know what y'all think. I'm, I'm curious. And also don't forget to like and to subscribe to this on whatever platform you're listening to us. We provide you with new content about Druidry, Christo Paganry every day. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the wonderful things that we are talking about. Today, we're digging back into the Awan. When I was writing A Dream of an Oak Church, I wrote a series of triads. And so we have a new one today. The Three Voices of Awan, The Whisper of Creation, The Song of Awakening, and The Roar of Transformation. What are the three voices of Awan? This is one of the roots of Druidry, unlike before when we were talking about just the gifts of Awan in general. This is how we as Druids interact with Awan. How does our relationship form and in what way is this relationship operating in our lives? To put it in a hopefully entertaining manner, it's like when that cool breeze hits the gusset, it wakes you up at first and gets you moving. But then you got to know which direction the wind is blowing. (laughs) What direction, after you get zapped into aliveness, what direction should you be moving in? Hearing that voice and knowing what it's calling you to or where it's calling you to. The first voice of the Awan that we're drawn to is the whisper of creation. I really think that this is a whisper. Sometimes it yells. I I remember when we went to visit a friend of ours who lived on the side of a mountain in Maryland for the first time. And it was really pretty out at his house. You could see out into the valleys and all the farms and everything. It was really pretty. We're having a good time. Then sunset happened. The sky just burned with fire and the sun went down between the hills in the distance. And it was just take your breath away, astounding to see. So yeah, sometimes creation yells. Often we encounter it through a whisper. If we're not careful, it's easy for us to miss that whisper because it is subtle. As it says in the scripture, when Elijah met God, God wasn't in the fire or the earthquake or the strong wind, but in the still small voice. And so many times in nature, that's how we encounter the Awan, that inspiration. It's a subtle thing. It's a small thing. It's a whisper. We tend to focus on listening to that loud thing, and then we miss the subtle whispers. The nuance. The nuance gets lost, distracted. When we're sitting here with the trees or out in a national park or in our front yard or backyard or just driving through a farmland or whatever, it's easy to get distracted and miss all the little things that are happening. The butterflies dancing through the air, the bees fluttering from flower to flower, the hummingbirds, all of the other birds and what they're doing. The easiest way for us to connect to the Awan in these moments is to develop an instinct of when we need to open up and just let it come in. I like to do cloud watching. Cloud watching is a form of scrying where you watch the clouds and listen for messages from them. This is a very subtle art. This is not a science. I remember being with some friends in San Francisco a couple years ago, and my back was really acting up, so I couldn't really do much of anything. I wrote about this actually on the blog over at Creation's Past, 
So I was sitting while they walked a labyrinth. And I was watching the clouds over them. As they were calling on this blessing to come in, the clouds kind of broke a little bit. And the sun was in the sky just right. That it looked like a chalice with the sun sitting glowing on t- over top of it. It was this beautiful moment that reminded me of a priest holding the communion host over the chalice. There in the sky, in the clouds. Right over top, or from my perspective where I was sitting, where these people are communing through the labyrinth. It's subtle. What does that mean? Well, that's a lot of interpretation. That's a lot of intuition work. But if I hadn't been looking, I only know of two other people that saw it because they saw the look on my face and they asked, what is it? And I pointed up at it in the sky and they looked up and they also had this moment of just rep because it it looked so clearly. It was a beautiful moment. And so finding those spaces, whether you are a cloud watcher like I am, whether you're communing with the trees or the birds and taking that intentional time to listen, but also just in your regular life. For myself, a practice I like to do in my regular life as part of my morning ritual of waking up and getting the day started, after I'm making the coffee, I take that moment sitting there, half asleep, half awake. I just try to listen to those soft whispers before I let myself get distracted by what I'm going to do today and what's going on today and what's on the agenda and all the on and on and on busyness, I take that moment. A part of that is part of the coffee offering to the Dagda, but part of that is also taking that moment to listen to the Awen for the subtle whisper, the inspiration, the soft whisper in those moments of silence. And also when I go to drink the coffee, I take a second moment because by then I'm a little bit more alert And as I'm about to partake that first sip, there's also a moment of just mindfulness, just listening for that whisper. I take the sip and then I listen again. But whether I hear something or not, it's that practice, that exercise, taking that moment so that then throughout the day, I'm better practiced at listening. This is where it's really important, if you didn't listen to it already, to go to our episode on the five spiritual powers. Because you build this up through that. It's learning to trust those intuitions and testing. Is this what I heard? And if the message proves true, then yes, you did hear it right. If it didn't, if you misheard, if if there wasn't anything there, okay, well, that's not how I should have felt that this, I, I was wrong in my intuition. And you train yourself through trial and error until you get to a place where you start having a really good batting average. You start really getting to a place where you know what's going on. The second voice of Awen is the song of awakening. And we did a whole episode on spiritual awakening, and we'll probably visit the topic a couple more times because it's a very deep, deep well to get into. But I really do think that the image of this as a song works. It really matters here. This is where the works of J.R.R. Tolkien really speak to my spirit. In the Silmarillion, in his version of creation, his God calls all the spirits in the universe together. They sing creation into being and one of them sings a discordant note and this is where all evil sickness and disease comes from all bad things are from this discordant note sung by this one spirit and to me this is a deep intuition because sometimes when we're listening to the voice of the Awan, we can feel that discordance within us something isn't resonating properly if you ever heard somebody play a guitar that's not tuned right and there's kind of a buzz On the strings, piano that's just slightly off tune. Something isn't quite tuned right. And this is, I think, something we can pick up on as we are interacting with Alan in those moments of inspiration that are, again, shockingly more common than we think because, again, like we were just saying, they're very subtle most of the time. They're not usually like, write this poem. Yeah. Sing this song into existence. (laughs) Paint this picture. They're not usually those loud, booming things that we think of when we think of inspiration hitting us. They're often this very subtle kind of background music to our lives. And starting to listen for those moments of dissonance where something is off in the song that could tell you something that you need to work on or that something that's going on with you. I know when a friend of mine was going through some things, I would feel this kind of discordance in the direction that they live in. 
when I would sit with it for a little bit, I would start remembering us hanging out. Just memories would start bubbling up of the two of us. I started thinking about them more and more and more. And then I sent them a text message only to find out that they were going through a thing. And we talked and they needed somebody to talk to. We do that a lot more than we realize as we're interacting with this. But that was an inspiration of the odd one. That is a very powerful thing because that the mindfulness will allow us to start hearing the different notes, hearing when it is the song, the Awen, and when it is something else, the discordance, the concentration will help us to weed through that, to separate it out. I know in myself, I often hear the song for joyfulness, for play, and for fun. That play, that interaction, which is a positive relationship, but I have to be very careful because along with that, there usually comes that discordance, that temptation to take what might be a playful, harmless prank and be harmful. And I have to be very careful to, to have that mindfulness so that I don't enter into the folly of causing harm, causing suffering through a harmful prank that creates suffering in others when it was supposed to be a moment of joy and fun but I listened to the wrong voice singing at that moment. I heard the Owens call, but along with that, somebody snuck in to lead me to harm. Having that concentration to weed out the different ones to see where that, that disconnect is and, and, to, and to be able to have the wisdom to see, is that a moment where I need to reach out to somebody or to look into something closer? This is where all of this comes with a very strong Learn to develop your intuition, whether you think you have one or not. It's learned a lot of my experiences with the Awan really are filtered through this intuitive gut feeling. And it has developed certain, what I jokingly and lovingly call superstitions in my life. I very often will have music playing in my head. That's just the kind of person that I am. There's a song playing in the, I got my own personal radio in the back of my head. I have learned over time that song can be either warning me of my own mental state. It can be warning me of something to be looking out for, both good and bad, like an opportunity that could be coming my way or some bad news that might be coming. But I don't rely on it. Just because I have a certain song playing in the back of my head does not mean that is the God's honest truth in that moment. That's why I call it a superstition because it's more of a... Woo, well, that's interesting. It's something to pay attention to. And developing those intuitions, those skills, really do help us connect with this amazing spirit, this amazing energy that does connect us back to the old druids and back to our ancestors all the way back. This kind of voice of creation that is in all things, always calling us to waking up, to being alert, to being mindful, to being in the present moment does help us to see where we are. That's going to be different for each, every one of us. Don't trust people that tell you here's the one way or here's the right way for any of this. We can tell you how we connect. We can tell you how others have connect, connected. We can tell you how traditionally people connect. You might not be musically inclined. So you might not experience the song of creation, the song of awakening as a song. I have a friend who certain colors become more vibrant to them. They like to paint. So color speaks to them. They'll start noticing reds more often or blues. And those have significances to them. And that's how they find the subtle meaning. I have friends that will smell things on the air. And they're not just phantom smells or anything. Like They're plants that are all around them. But for some reason... The honeysuckle is really strong right now, and it shouldn't be because you're standing right next to a rose bush. Just little olfactory senses. You'll pick up on this in your own way. It could just be a gut sensation. It could be a random thought that flickers through your mind that you need to connect with and investigate further. And so, that's the beauty of this practice is learning that language for yourself. Yeah, this is why we talk about it in terms of languages, because of the simple fact that it's translated into your own understanding, your language. Everyone has their personal language and you can learn other languages as well. Like I've started out 
all of that was understood on an intuitive level for me. I spoke from a language of intuition and I didn't know the language of song. I didn't know the language of color, but I learned to, to speak the language of song so that I can take my, as I interpret it as intuition, but I can speak to others who interpret it through song as a second language. The third voice, the roar of transformation. Now I called this one a roar for a very specific reason. I don't believe people change on a dime. I do believe people change. I know that I've changed a lot over the course of my life and I have watched other people change. What happens though is little changes could have accrue and add up. And then all of a sudden, whoosh, everything seems to turn. Everything seems to change. Enough little changes finally come together. It's like when you're playing one of those games where they're showing you a blurry image or a pixelated image that's slowly coming into focus. And all of a sudden you can see what it is. There's that roar, that moment of realization that, oh, that's it. That's it right there. I get it. I see it. That's how transformation often happens for us. It's little things. We don't even notice these little, little things that we've started doing. We've started picking up. It gets frustrating for us because we want change to just happen. We want transformation to just happen, just to be better. But it's these little changes that accrue over time. And if we're not listening for the little things and that subtle whisper and that gentle song, we can be blindsided when that roar of transformation hits. We can be misguided into thinking that it is a sudden dramatic change. When it, if you take time and go back and actually look, there's often all these little bitty changes, just a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit here and a little bit there that added up to all of a sudden you have the constellation just right. And often, the circuit connects and boom. Oftentimes it is an oscillation and the problem is not recognizing the oscillation. A lot of times that transformation is just a simple matter of saying yes. The thing is, is we often go yes, but no. Yes, but maybe. Yes, but yes. And then we go, yes. And all we see is that roar, that final confident yes. And we don't notice all that oscillation between the yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, where we chose, but then we chose not. Chose, but then chose not. Or even more, the, the this, that. Yeah. I can't tell you the moment where I switched from being what I would call a non-theistic Christian to a Christopagan. I can't tell you when that change happened. I just flipped back and forth. I'm doing work with Brick Bridget today. This is, of course, all in my mind and it's all psychological and it's da 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 da. And no, I'm just living in this world doing my. Oh, I'm working with Cardwin today. No, I'm just kind of living. And it was just back and forth and back and forth, changing from this to that, this to that, this to that. And so one day, I just didn't switch back to that. I stayed this. I can't tell you when I became a druid. I've actually been writing up a thing, tracing this for myself. I can see all of these moments of, oh, well, that's when I started learning about this. And that's when I started practicing that. And that's when this kind of came. At no point in that line would I have called myself a druid. At no point would I have called myself Christopagan. I wouldn't have used any of those words for myself in any of that time period. But I can see that oscillation starting. I'm this and I'm that. I'm this and I'm that. I'm this and I'm that. It's like a click, the tick of a clock. I'm this and I'm that. Now I'm just this. Who knows? I might start oscillating in a different way at some point. I don't know. That's the glory of creation. Everything is ever changing. That's really how change happens. I didn't realize I was a Christopagan until I realized I was a Christopagan. On this channel, there's a video called, am I a Christopagan? Like you can see the thought process start. Well, a lot of people are calling me this and I don't think it works. I don't think it fits. Here's all the reasons why I know, no. And then a couple of months later, so yeah, yeah. That wasn't a thought process as much as in the after effect it was. Like, well, how did I get here? It was noticing this back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then that back and forth just stopped. Yeah, I still pray to Mary and Jesus and the saints that I always pray to. But I spent a lot of time praying to Bridget and working with Bridget and Cairdwin. And 
I could go down the list and I'm not going to keep going down the list because it's long, but that oscillation just stopped. I'm sure it's actually going in a way that I'm not noticing now. The pendulum is swinging in a different direction and I haven't noticed the subtleties of the new oscillation that's happening. I've changed from what I was. So it's not swinging back to where I was before, but I'm sure it's swinging towards something that I'm, I'm not fully cognizant of yet. One of these moments in the future, that roar of transformation is going to hit me again. And I'm going to go, oh, I've changed. No, I it was changing the whole time. And that's true for each and every one of us. Like we are constantly in this state of change. It just sometimes takes a certain amount of change to accrue before we realize it. And often it takes somebody pointing it out to us because we live in this skin and in this brain and we don't often see the changes that are happening. It's often why it's called a roar. It's usually someone that's kind of grab you and shake you, metaphorically speaking. Hey, wake, wake up. up. And you have that moment of realization. Those are the three voices of the album. Is this the only way to think about it? No. Are these the only way to think about these three voices? No. That is the beautiful thing about working with Alma is it is a flow. It's not a thing. It's like going to visit a river. The river is different every time you go there, but it's still the same river. The way I see the river and experience the river will be different from the way Brian does or you do. That's because every moment the molecules of water have moved. By the time I look at the water molecules that you were just looking at, they're down river. Yeah. They're gone. I'm looking at different ones. How do you interact with the owl? How do you hear the voice of the owl? Like I said, you might not experience it as a voice at all. I know people that hear the voice of the owl, like I said, through color, through smell, through just gut sensations. If you've never actually interacted with the owl, let me phrase this the way that you need to hear it. How have you been interacting with the Alwyn that you haven't realized you were interacting with the Alwyn? Because we all do. It's not something special just for the Druids amongst us. Everyone is touched by the Alwyn and receives grace from the Alwyn. The beauty of Druidry is we look to it and we see it. I hope that this has been helpful for you. I hope that you've enjoyed this and gotten something out of it. If you have, do let us know if you're listening to us. On Spotify or YouTube, you can leave a comment right there and we'll see it and be able to respond to you. If you're listening to us anywhere else, you can still leave a comment there, but they won't let us know. So after you do that, copy that, go to creationspast.com, click chat, paste your comment there because they do notify us and we will be able to have a conversation over there. Thank you to everybody who's been leaving comments. It really is the highlight of my day to get back down and see all the wonderful things that you all are saying. The questions that you have, the really, really does. Thanks to everyone who's sharing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And thank you to everybody who is sharing this with others. We're getting quite a bit of traffic from both Discord and Facebook. And I know that's not me. So thank you <laughs> so much for sharing and helping other people find the work that we are doing here. It really does mean a lot. If you have a few bucks that you could pass our way over at creationspass.com, you can join a membership over there that will help us to keep the electric on he put on our table but also when we start doing our classes members will get access to those classes before anybody else if you'd rather support us elsewhere you can support us on patreon and kofi i am ce dorset on both c-e-d-o-r-s-e-t-t -E and over there you're supporting everything that i do from the music to the stories to everything thank you so much to everybody who does that and everybody who doesn't have any money i understand i feel your pain but please share what we're doing and help us to continue to grow because I feel like we have something special here and we're growing something special together. And I don't know. I feel like this is something the world really needs right now. So thank you so very, very much. And until next time, may the Awen sing a special song for you, a song to guide you towards your heart's deepest desire and lead you towards the blessings that you need and a way from all the things that might do you harm. Amen. Amen. Amen.